choir. Amen. You all don't look very friendly on the spread. Just saying, it would be nice if you bunched up, but I know people don't like that. Well, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. And the choir got us off to a rousing, rousing start. So thank you. That's one of my favorite songs. Thank you so much. This is Pilgrim Congregational Church. We are part of the United Church of Christ, which is a denomination that is raising their voice as an alternative vision of what the church can be, where God is seen as all loving and inclusive, in a time where many find the church narrow and out of touch. We preach a progressive gospel. Here, barriers of ethnicity class and sexual orientation are torn down. Here, everyone is welcome. So if you believe in God some of the time, most of the time, but not sure if you believe at all, guess what? You are still welcome to this community and to this house of worship. Because whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here. Straight, gay, rich, poor, PhD, GED, or no D's at all. <laughs> we welcome you to the love of God in this community Amen. where we can all seek forgiveness and we can all be affirmed. So let us take a deep breath and let us begin worship. Good morning. So if you look carefully in the bulletin, there's some information about God's trombone. Says I would, uh, of course, it was written by James Weldon Johnson. But they are essentially sermons, many sermons that have uh, a deep meaning. I will be sharing with you this morning, Let My People Go. And I would encourage you to listen to it the way one might listen to a spiritual. When you listen to a spiritual, you should listen to it understanding that there are often coded messages within a spiritual that have an even deeper and profound meaning for those who have been oppressed. Let my people go. And God called Moses from the burning bush. He called in a still, small voice. And he said, Moses, Moses, and Moses listened, and he heard the voice, and he said, Lord, here am I, and God spoke again to Moses, and he said, Moses, draw not nigh, take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. And Moses stopped where he stood, and Moses took off his shoes, and Moses looked in the bush, and he heard the voice, but he saw no man. Again God spoke to Moses. This time he spoke to him in a voice of thunder. I am the Lord God Almighty, the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses hid his face. And God said, I have seen the awful suffering of my people down in Egypt. They're hard oppressors. They're overseers and drivers. The groans of my people have filled my ears, and I can't stand it no longer. So I've come down to deliver them out of the land of Egypt out of the land of Egypt into the land of Canaan. So therefore, Moses, go down. Go down into Egypt and say to Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Moses paused and he said, Lord, who, who am I to speak 
before O Pharaoh, for Lord, you know I'm short of tongue. And God said, I will be thy mouth, and I will be thy tongue. Go down, go down into Egypt, and say to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses went down with his rod in his hand, and he said unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. Who is this God? Pharaoh said. I know all the gods of Egypt, but I don't know any God of Israel. So you go back, Moses. You go back and you tell your God that I will not let his people go. Poor old Pharaoh. Poor old Pharaoh. He knows all the knowledge of Egypt, yet he never knew. He never knew the one and living God. Poor old Pharaoh. He's got all the power of Egypt, and he's going to try to test that strength with the might of the great Jehovah, the might of the God of hosts, the Lord Almighty in battle. And God, sitting high up in his heaven, laughed at poor old Pharaoh. And God said, go again. Go again, Moses, this time you and your brother Aaron, and say once more, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. And Moses and Aaron went down with their rods in their hands, and they worked many signs and wonders. But Pharaoh called his magic men, and they worked wonders too. He would not, no, he would not let God's people go. And Moses paused and he hid his face once again. Poor old Pharaoh. Again, he has all the power of Egypt, and he's trying to test that strength with the Lord God Almighty. And Pharaoh called his overseers, and Pharaoh called the drivers, and he said, put heavier burdens on the backs of the Hebrew children. And the people chode with Moses, and they yelled out loud, You've been to Pharaoh, and look what he's done to us now. And Moses was troubled in mind. And God rained down plagues upon Egypt, plagues of frogs, and lice and locusts, plagues of blood and boils and darkness, and other plagues beside. And every time God would remove a plague, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He would not, no, he would not let God's people go. And then the Lord said to Moses, Listen, Moses, the God of Israel will not be mocked. Just one more witness of my power I'll give to this hard-hearted Pharaoh. This very night, about midnight, I'll pass over the land of Egypt. 
and I will smite their firstborn dead. And Pharaoh rose in the middle of the night, and he sent in a hurry for Moses. And he said to Moses, Moses, you take all your goods and all your flocks and all the Hebrew children and never return to this land again. And Moses led them on, and God followed on as before, like a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And they came down to the Red Sea. In the morning, oh, in the morning, they missed the Hebrew children for 400 years, 400 years. They held them down in Egypt's land. They held them under the driver's lash, working without money and without a price. And it might have been Pharaoh's wife who said, Pharaoh, look what you've done now. Look what you've done. You've sent away the Hebrew children. Who's going to serve us now? Who's going to plant and plow the corn? Who's going to work in the middle of the night? Who's going to work in the blazing sun? Pharaoh, you tell me that. And Pharaoh called his generals, and the generals called the captains, and the captains called the soldiers, and they hitched up all of the chariots. Six hundred chariots. Twenty-four hundred horses. And they were all filled. The chariots were all filled with men to pursue the Hebrew children down at the Red Sea. And the children looking back, they saw Pharaoh's army coming. And the rumble of the chariots was like a thunderstorm. And the wearing of the wheels was like a rushing wind, and the dust from the horses made a cloud that darkened the day, and the glittering of the spears was like lightning in the night. And the children of Israel all lost hope. The children of Israel all lost faith, and they mumbled, and they grumbled, and they yelled aloud to Moses, Are there no graves in Egypt? Slavery in Egypt would have been better than to come here and die in this wilderness. And Moses said, Stand still. Stand still and see the Lord's salvation. For the Lord God of Israel will not forsake his people. He'll break great Egypt's swords and shields. He'll break the chariots. He'll break the, he'll break the horsemen. He'll show proud Pharaoh who is really the God of Israel. And Moses lifted his rod over the Red Sea. And God, with a blast of his nostrils, blew the waters apart, and the waves rushed back and stood in a pile. And it left a path in the middle of the sea as dry as the sands of the desert. And the children crossed on over, on to the other side. And when Pharaoh saw the children crossing dry, he rushed on in behind them. And old Pharaoh got about halfway across when God unlashed the waters and the waves rushed back together. And Pharaoh and his army got lost. Pharaoh and his host got drowned. And Moses sang. And Miriam danced. 
And the people of Israel shouted for joy. Listen. Listen, all you sons of Pharaoh. Who do you think? Who do you think can hold God's people back when the Lord God himself has said, let my people go? Psalm 119, but it is verses 
34 through 45. <clears throat> on pages 567 through 687 in the Old Testament. Give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, preserve my life. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. And from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
One generation had sacrificed, protested, and strategized for systemic change. And the others, the beneficiaries, who were born into an atmosphere of access and privilege, only knew strategy through the beeps and tweets of digital systems. The world of instant gratification made sacrifice seem a weak and empty notion. And so although there was so much that still needed to be changed and challenged, those next in line to move the tribe forward knew of a movement, but didn't know how to move past mobilization. Knew of an elixir of hope, but didn't thirst for renewal. Knew the isolation of integration, but not the inherent protection that can come from being left alone. And when the spirit of destruction came again, as it always does, for it takes all defeats as momentary setbacks that reveal costly secrets of conquest. That spirit of destruction was able to blow in new directions. For this time, there were few strong anchors to hold them back. The winds of destruction blew and blew through their homes, through their bodies, unsettling their bones, and left a residue of self-loathing on their skin. The atmosphere reeked of agony and distrust. Lies stood tall over truth, and decorum lay fading, mocked and bleeding. The lessons of the sacrificers not shared. The climb they began up the mountain of respect and self-sufficiency. The journey towards self-love and positive community now on pause. As the guides passed away and the vision became blurred, so many dreams began deferred. The sacrificers who fought for their humanity against the destroyers who once enslaved them and hung them from trees now had lived long enough to see the spirit of destruction walk alongside them daily, bringing death to homes, blocks, and schools, but this time dressed in faces that look like them killing mothers and fathers and babies. <coughs> Modesty was mocked. Porn was the norm. You could take it in for free. Hedonism ruled with a firm hand. Broken relationships, abused, misused bodies scattered over the land. And the sacrificers now pray to the generation they had hoped to liberate. Wondered where they went wrong on the road to set us free. Some tried to tell the story, but no one wanted to listen. So much other stuff to learn from the sages of crass commercialism. And yet, they still persevered praying for and giving wisdom to those who would open themselves to the lessons, the knowledge, and the love gained through sacrifice.